we started 15 years ago, a few weeks ago, and we didn't really start an organization. We came together in Washington, D.C. to call Code Pink as Bush was frightening the American people with his color-coded terrorist alerts, orange, red, and yellow. You know, we thought that we would sit outside the White House and be rational and say this war is crazy and unconstitutional and illegal and it's going to open Pandora's box and you don't want to do that and it's going to cost way more than you're saying and it's wrong. And 15 years later, it's worse than we could have ever imagined. In Iraq and around the world, we're now participated in like eight wars. We have more bases than we had and more money is being spent on war out of your tax dollar and we need to really take on the whole war economy and grow local peace economies, which has been really a wonderful way to spend the last couple of years and it showed up as we celebrated our 15 years and went to different cities and how much more engaged our community is in their own community and in understanding, you know, what is a just transition and this war economy which is oppressive and destructive and extractive. And I call the peace economy the feminine economy because it is the caring, sharing, giving, relational, resilient economy without which none of us would be alive. And the war economy is what drives us to death in its extraction and oppression and destruction. So, you know, just kind of look at what you do in the day and what happens when you think, when you're operating in your day out of separation and out of scarcity, that's the war economy because we actually live connected in abundance. So we actually have practices as we grow local peace economy where e each week we practice one of the things like time. Time, whoa, where the war economy just wants to use your time up. What if you broke free of your time and just like, oh, what if I give my time to the peace economy? What does that look like? What does it look like to give and to share? And after a couple years of this, I can promise you, you're happier. The one thing that everybody is, is happier, shinier, more alive. And really the war economy is deafening, it's deadening. And um, it, you know, it takes away your creativity. And we watch it all the time at Code Pink, just in our own work, how it's the natural thing. Like, I need a result, I need to be efficient, I need to deliver. And instead of like, how do I be in relationship with this person? How do I step out of collectivism into relationship with my own community? I think when I really came to the realization about the war economy, it was global inequality, global climate change, and $1.4 trillion worth of weapons sold every year. The only result historically has been fascism. And I saw growing local peace economies as a way to address all of it. Because if you're relational, if you've built trust, if you're working together, you can write out pretty much anything. And if you look at the different cities that kind of are local peace economies, even like look at Asheville, North Carolina, the unemployment stayed the same in, in 2008. Houses were taken away from people. You know, when you demand relationality and you own your own utilities, when you've, when you've pulled power back and you've not let everything be privatized, you survive these situations that are gonna definitely happen. The Congress and the White House are Teflon. I can't really go after them right now. And the anti-war movement, if we're gonna build, we have to have something that we can win out, some lever we can pull. Well, our schools, our churches, our cities, our states, our pension funds, and our Congress are all making a killing on killing. So it's a way that everyone can engage. There's some piece that you can engage in and engage in locally, which is always a problem about war, because it's so overwhelming and so complex that people just like, I don't want to think about it. It's not hit me yet. But it's hitting the US every day more and more. And in our communities, um, you know, veterans, veterans' families, uh, mil police killings. People are starting to recognize, oh, the war is home. It has come home. It plays out in so many ways. It plays out in policing is now 30% of some city budgets. That we think that being violent is a way to solve anything is now part of our culture and it's part of our thinking. And so we hope to like show different ways of, yeah, capitalism is bad. It's there. I keep telling people when they're growing their local peace economy, they don't have to worry. It's not going to fall apart too soon. You, we actually have time, a bridge, to where we can be growing the alternative. It just takes our creativity. It, it's the, the sense that war has always been or this is the only way. We have to break that. That, well, first of all, manufacturing jobs, I mean, 
if you stick with the capitalism, those jobs are going anyway. You know, jobs are going. How do we recreate the economy so that it works for everyone? And that takes everybody being present. And the, the problem is, is when you leap that far away, the way we're going to find that out is by starting. We don't ever know when we start on a journey towards somewhere what the end result's going to look like. It's the first, the commitment that I am going to start out on this path. A just transition, the, you know, is about us taking the power back. It's not about demanding it from corporations. It's not about demanding it from our government. They're all failing us. They have failed us for a very long time. It's a wake-up call to find out what needs to happen, make it happen, make it happen with your neighbors and your relations, and make it happen with a diverse group of people because really, pretty much today shows us yet again, it's all up to us.